I just thought I'd make this quick uh, video to go along with the, this uh, armor insert multi mesh and nano mesh brush that I've just been messing around with there the last day. Um, so I don't know, the idea just came into my head. Um, I've been messing around with nano meshing and trying to think of you know different ways it might be useful practically. So um, I thought maybe making an armor brush like this with uh, this 12 different types of armor you have uh, six kind of male based armor chain kind of male based armor and then six scale kind of based armor so basically what I did was um, I just made these tiling um, sort of patterns in 3d max here now I could have made this anywhere could have made it in Z model or um, did whatever you know but just um, for me it was just the quickest just uh, jump into max and just uh, make the they're very simple uh, geometry um, I tried to keep them sort of, you know, fairly low poly count because obviously when you're using nano mesh, you're going to be going up way into the into the tens of millions. Um, so I'm going to I'll provide a link uh, to download uh, some insert multi mesh brush and the nano mesh brush. Um, I'm going to just provide a link to the insert mesh um, ZBrush Central thread, the repository thread. So I'll just put a link to that down below here in the description so these are the, the pieces anyway uh, in max and you can see um, you know they're fairly they're fairly simple you know ranging from from this one this is the arc I think this is the arc male I'm just gonna put this uh, yeah, it's the arc male it doesn't I just named them these things you can use them as whatever as whatever the hell you like you know and um, this was the eleven one so you know, as I say, it's fairly simple geometry. This one here, uh, the Shan Wen Kai, it's a Chinese um, armor, I think, from the ninth or tenth century. Um, and this one here was interesting to make, uh, just to get it tiling. And um, so that's the main thing is to um, the simpler ones, obviously, like this. This is the Viking uh, male, the Viking scale um, leather jerkin. So you can see this, the different types here. Um, most of them are, are very simple to, to make and to tile. So you can see, for instance, if I grab this one here. So after I've made all of them, you know, I'd, I'd test them out here in Max just to obviously make sure that they, um, they scale by just just dragging them, shift dragging them, copying them, and, uh, you know, keep cloning them. And you can see then that, uh, that they all tile. So that's goes without saying that's the, uh, the most important thing. Because uh, with nano mesh, um, it's dependent on your topology. So um, there was a bit of messing around and experimenting, and um, you have to play with the settings in nano mesh because uh, it tiles perfectly here on a flat surface in Max. But once um, you're going to apply it to a curved surface, like uh, you know, you might be putting on a chest plate or whatever, um, or you know, an armored sleeve or something like that. Um, you're going around curve so um, there's a bit of messing around you can also edit mesh within nano mesh um, while you're um, setting it up so you can you know you have that, that option that flexibility as well so this was basically it for max um, once I had all these um, all I did was just center them all out center them all out to the world center zero 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 and um, that was it then, just go Z with them all selected. And then over in ZBrush, they'll all just come in. If you have them all selected and you hit go Z, they'll all come in as um, as sub tools in the same list as part of the same uh, tool. So the first thing I did then when I, when I brought these all in was I, I unified them all because Nano Mesh, you know, is, is going to like to work with ZBrush scale, so Max to uh, ZBrush scale is, is quite is quite a difference in it. So um, unifying them all first before doing anything was was uh, was important, and uh, because I didn't do that first when I was creating it, and I was having all kinds of problems with scale. So um, when I was trying to tile them across uh, the surface, so a quick way to do that is just come down, and just beside your unify button, you can just press N to pop up all your sub tools, and then you can just click one click unify press n click the next one unify n next one and so on and then when you have them all unified 
that's pretty much it. Um, one other thing, there was one of these parts, this Viking um, armor here came in with flip normals. So just be careful of that. that um, before you leave, if you're building this stuff in a different program, make sure that your geometry is good. You have no end guns, you have no flip normals, um, and obviously, you know, rats' nests, uh, unmelted verts, all the usual uh, coplanar faces, all that sort of stuff. You want to just make sure that's all good, or um, you'll end up just having trouble in, in ZBrush. So, once you've all that set up, sub tools brought in, everything's unified. It's just a matter of uh, whatever brush and then just clicking uh, create insert multi mesh and then I just saved it and um, I just made a little icon and uh, used that icon here for my brush icon you can see this one's uh, the nano IMM and then I also have uh, the armor uh, that's just the IMM so I just saved out the two so you save your you create your um, insert multi mesh brush first and then this will become available uh, create nano mesh and then just create the nano mesh brush, save them both out, and you're pretty much ready to go. Yeah, one other thing I just wanted to mention was um, I haven't really set up properly with this, but uh, you could just um, take your insert multi mesh brush and uh, just clone it, and then you could turn on, come up to stroke curve, and just turn on curve mode, and adjust your uh, just your curve step. And then, you know, we could make them um, use as a curve brush them for maybe trimming. You know, you could put different trim, uh, whatever around the sleeve or around the, the chainmail hood or, or whatever you wanted to do, you know. And um, so it just gives you that extra extra option. Now, the one thing you will have to do is um, these are all oriented. When you create the insert multi mesh, they're all oriented the way I had them in Max. Um, I built them all uh, front on and max and them when I imported them in here they were all front on as well so depending on what way they're facing um, they're going to follow that curve brush so that's just one thing to, to bear in mind you, you might just have to reorient them rotate them uh, 90 degrees so for instance if I chose this one you can see it's going it's going the wrong way, well not the wrong way but you want to rotate that 90 degrees um, to get it to follow to follow the stroke of the curve um, and yeah just wanted to say that as well just an extra thing that you can do so here's um, you know it's just a basic uh, bit of geometry here to represent maybe some sort of uh, chest plate or armor plate or whatever so uh, I'll just select the nano mesh brush Nano, select the nano mesh brush, and then you can press M, the same as your insert multi mesh, and choose which piece of uh, which piece of armor. So um, I have one set up here and, and already on it. So I'll just come to nano mesh, turn it on, and that's the uh, the elven kind of scale mail. So you can see here there's different um, settings here. I had to change the size a bit and the width and the length just to get them to fit in because. As I said earlier on, your, it's dependent on your topology, so if you have um, rectangular rather than square faces, um, you'll have to do a little bit of manual sort of manipulation here, stretching and whatnot, and mess around with the uh, proportion and fit. Um, you know, depending on these two can give quite different results, so just mess around with them. Um, and then, you know, you could, if you wanted to, um, change some of this stuff here. So say I wanted to just offset it a bit, you could random, you could offset it a bit here, and then just uh, randomize it just to give it a bit more of a random um, appearance. So this is it's, it's very flexible here. The amount of things you can do, um, like random, isn't going to work here for the armor, simply because of uh, the nature of a pin tile, and it wouldn't really make any sense. So you can show your mesh behind. So let's say, for instance, um, of all this set up on a character as armor, and I'm happy with it. You can come down here then to one to mesh, and turn it all into um, it'll actually just convert it to a mesh, and then you can edit it as usual. So maybe you might have some overlapping plates or something here, or something that didn't quite work out because of the underlying topology. You could just uh, auto groups when you create a uh, convert it to a mesh, auto groups, and then just use a uh, mask by poly groups or the topology brush or um, 
changes the move tool, move to rotate and scale by control clicking to mask everything else out bar what you want to work on so all the usual tools so it is uh, quite flexible Um, once you have your all your stuff set up your your brushes and that set up and another thing you can do then um, you can just you can test it out really quick so with the nano mesh still on you can just press M and choose uh, I'll choose one of these uh, males and then you just come down here to inventory replace nano mesh from brush and then it's going to replace that so you see here it's using the same sentence from the previous mail so if we just uh, I'll just set the width and the length back to one and now you just play with you can play with the size then so you might you know zoom in on your canvas and just bring it up slightly just that it's working like that or else I might want to you can also come in here to edit mesh and you can edit that on the fly and it'll instance update back out here so as I say you know these offsets another um, handy offset for this armor to use is um, the Z offset so that pushes it off the surface so if it's interpenetrating the surface below um, which would be you see you have the offset way out so you can bring that in or out depending on on your needs and then another important one here is alignment so if you click align to normal it's going to align to the normal of each face and now I might want to bring that size down or up or change um, just want to change this back to zero yeah that was the wrong um, it was just it was rotated here 90 from when I was using the elvish um, the elven scale mail so that looks like that's about it there and you can see now it's pretty well lined up there so this was the uh, pretty much the way I went about setting up the brush and, and, and using the brush and that's that's pretty much all there is to it Um, yeah that's all there is to it well obviously there's more to it there's a lot more settings here that I didn't go into but you can um, I just um, just start playing around with it, and, and um, you've that bit more interest when you're actually creating something that you know, rather than just messing around with random objects. If you're actually creating something, um, you're gonna sort of gonna put a bit more effort in um, with the settings and everything, trying to get it to look good. So it's it's, it's a good bit of motivation to um, to learn this stuff. So, um, that is pretty much it for the uh, the armor, IMM, and nano mesh brush. And I'll just maybe grab another one and inventory. Um, sorry, inventory. You can see every time you you'll have to just uh, adjust the setting. So the rotation here. Then you can just uh, mess with your size again, and there's also a, a tiling feature here. So if you brought the, uh, just to give you that extra bit of control, if you wanted them smaller, and you didn't want to rely on the amount of faces on the underlying topology, you could just uh, you could just tile this. Bloody zebra sliders. Sometimes they just I keep forgetting to click on them, pressing enter. Um, and then you can bring the size up. And now we can see we we have our pattern uh, repeated, tiled. There's other stuff down here, um this uh when you set these uh, the tiles higher than one, you can come in here to grid and then you can change you can change this and, and just choose all different um different sort of patterns um, just kind of default uh, or sorry presets so yeah well, as I say I'll leave the link um, to the ZBrush thread ZBrush Central thread uh, below in the description so um, alright that's it from this one
Alright, cheers, thanks, good luck.